I first met Peter after noticing his blog in the online Tucson newspaper. One can a week. This neighborhood food collection program has brought almost 43,000 pounds of food to our community food bank and raised nearly $10,000. Hi, my name is Peter Norback and I'm the originator of One Can a Week. must start somewhere. This one starts when Peter, troubled by the economic crisis, decided to do something in his community. He approached his neighbor Edward to tell him about his plan. For quite a while I'd seen uh, Peter walking his two little white dogs. Then one day he just approached me and said he had an idea of gathering food for the food bank he would approach the neighbors and have them donate on a weekly basis. And before he could finish his complete thought, I told him, do it. Whatever you have in mind, do it. I would knock on the door and then back up a few feet. They would come out and see the picture and then they start talking and, and then they recognized me eventually. But it's funny, it's the dogs got first recognition. Then I had give them, once they give me a can, a little thank you card or I leave it as you'll see over there, every week, so they can see I'm the guy that picked it up. But the best thing is, I thought of was the, it's called Sorry We Missed You card, where if they don't have the can there, I leave it, and next week I get twice as much food. So it's a, what I call my guilty card. Some people were skeptical that Peter's plan could work. It's a funny story about how we first uh, came into contact with, with Peter. Um, he approached our director of development here and came in for a meeting with us and uh, had this, it sounded like a scheme to us to get people in a neighborhood to, you know, donate one can a, a week. And, you know, we kind of looked at him like he might be a little um, off his rocker. I wasn't sure at that point that it would work. I knew that the food bank was having issues, so I thought, well, maybe if we do it more often that will help. And I. I thought a lot of people don't think about it more often because there aren't these drives going on. So if somebody was talking about it every week, he'd probably be willing to do it. I was amazed when he came. It was this, it's every Sunday, and there was one Sunday it was Christmas, <laughs> and and this was in the beginning. And I, I of course thought that's a day off. So I didn't. And he was there at the door, and I and he said no. He said it has to be. You know, a ritual, it has to be a weekly thing, you, so this way no one forgets. There can be no such rainy days. He's better than the mailman. And so when we got to know one another, I said something to him about, um, you know, this has gone on really, really, really well. But I said, you know, I've been part of other projects in the past that were, you know, people were very enthusiastic and then all of a sudden they lost interest and it just sort of disappeared. Um, and basically he said, you know, we're not going to let this one disappear. And I think the thing that has made it successful is the fact that somebody picks up the cans. So the secret isn't complicated. It's just one person who is consistent and most importantly, accountable to his donors. I print out a quarterly report because I treat them all as investors and every investor I ever met. They want um, to know what happened to their investment. So people just take, usually take stuff and never tell them what's going on. I tell them where everything went. The Miles neighborhood is working class. A mix of college students, employees at the University of Arizona, whites, Hispanics, older people, and young families. Before One Can A Week, it was like any other neighborhood in Tucson. But after some time, their neighborhood became a community. I've seen the change in the neighborhood. People that didn't participate before are now participating. And all of a sudden, it's like everybody joined in. I think it's brought us together. People know more names. Um, they're more comfortable, maybe. Even if I never see them other than that Sunday, I know they're home and I drive by and I look at it and I think of them and, 
some of the older women, I'm like, oh, they've got some weeds. I'll, I'll pull a few weeds when I'm collecting food for them, and um, it's, it's really nice. Yes, I think it has changed the neighborhood a lot. We all feel like we're taking part in something big and special. Uh, we saw it grow, you know, from just it was a little bit at a time. He had a basket, and next thing you know, he had his car full. And, and it's just so great to know that all together, we're making a big difference. What I find most exciting about One Can a Week is the opportunity to expand this program to other neighborhoods, and not just in Tucson, but around the entire country. It would be wonderful if every community did it. If every community here in Southern Arizona was involved in this, we could eradicate hunger in a couple of years. And I know for my own part, it just seems very small. You know, two, three bucks for some peanut butter or noodles or cereal or, or what have you. And that's just in our neighborhood. So, you know, he's always saying if uh, more neighborhoods did it, we'd raise a lot more food. And of course you hear there's a lot more need for, for food, so. With one can a week, on average, I collect 229 pounds a week. And that's uh, also $50 and about 18 cents a week. Now, that's really kind of uh, attainable in every neighborhood. And can you imagine, you know, how much food would be collected uh, if a lot of people got involved in this and just did their 100 homes and didn't hurt themselves three hours on Sunday? The end result would be 17, 17 million pounds of food, excuse me. And here's the big part, even with that $50.18, it comes out to almost $4 million. So just very few people in a city this size, which is just a million people, will generate enough food to take care of everybody and people are kind of giving just a little can. I told Peter a long time ago, what, what I've noticed in the world that we live in, you have to be consistent and you have to do it one, one piece at a time. You know, you'll see an ant pile that has a, a, a protective mound around it for the rain that's about three inches high. And you, look, you wonder how the heck do they do it? You see that, that they'll do it by one ant picking one grain of rock, one grain of sand, and moving it. So that's what one can a week is. With so much economic suffering going on, People like Peter have taken the matter into their own hands. You know, and I'm not sure whether it's one can a week or whether it's just people in other parts of the country who have recognized the need to help their fellow citizens and particularly children who are hungry. But I think we're moving in a direction where people, and be it the economy or be it the state of the world, who knows. But I think we're moving towards a, a period in time where neighbors are concerned about neighbors. I would like to believe that, you know, that the public in general is generous, that they do care about their, their neighbors in need, that they don't believe that people should be going hungry. You know, I would just like to believe that they want to make a difference, and many don't know how. One can a week is, is really a way to help address the issue of hunger and make a difference in your community. People are pretty willing to help if they're able to. And I think if you have a program like Peter's where you know the food's going to the community food bank, you get his reports that show you how much was collected, how much cash was collected, you know, it makes it easier to trust that your time and effort and your money is going to go to a good cause and help those people who need it. Uh, we're always talking about the, the value of government. Government's great at fixing roads, you know, getting a, a one basic educational system. They're good at uh, making sure everybody's got equal rights, you know, and they just get, they're, they're good at that. The community stuff, we should be doing that. And it should all be on us. It's just a better society uh, that we're using our intellects, not our emotions. Someone once said that big problems require big solutions, but that's not what I see. Maybe we can solve our big problems when a large group of people each take one small step.